Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Startup Central right here on ET Now with me, Avan Dabash. This is a show that's dedicated to new age tech, entrepreneurship, and all things to do with the startup ecosystem. Today on the show, we'll be joined by the management of Mako as they talk about their latest fundraising plans. We'll also get in a view on how funding has plummeted to a seven-year low, as well as get you a view from Paytm that has announced an overall investment in Gift City. That and lots more lined up. But first up here are your top stories in the startup world. Let's kickstart the show then by putting the spotlight on Mako. It's the parent of the dental tech startup Tootsie as well as the skincare brand Skinsy, and they've raised close to $16 million in a fund round that has been led by 361 Asset as well as the investment office of Ashish Kacholia. Dr. R.P. Mehta is a founder and CEO at Mako and now joins us on the show. Good to have you on board now. Um, just start off by telling us which are the investors that have participated because I know that there's a, a number of them in addition to 361 Asset. Thanks, Avan. Uh, this round was led by 361 Asset Management, which is formerly IFL uh, Asset Management Partners. They're one of the larger asset managers of the country, as well as uh, the investment office of uh, Mr. Ashish Kacholia, who again, as we all know, is a reputed uh, public equity markets investor of the country. Um, we also saw participation from almost all of our key investors, uh, existing key investors in this round, which includes uh, Eight Roots, the venture capital arm of Fidelity, uh, private equity, uh, Paramark Ventures, uh, the family office uh, of the midlife co-promoters, uh, and my family as well, uh, double down uh, in this existing round. Sure. So what is it that you will be utilizing the $16 million worth of funds for? Will you be really expanding your geographic footprint? Sure. So just sharing some context, um, we are basically a platform that's focused on providing clinical grade makeovers to, you know, every Indian in an accessible and affordable manner. Currently, we already have uh, operations across almost 100 cities of India. Out of these, in the core cities of India, we have a pretty strong ecosystem that comprises more than 100, uh, you know, dental and derma professionals, uh, a US FDA-backed laboratory, uh, and more than 150 uh, agents on feed that actually provide home scan services. So the capital that we'll raise in this round, we intend to sort of strengthen our presence across the next leg of 30 cities in India, thereby expanding and deepening our home scan services and also the experience centers uh, that we will be setting up there. We currently already have almost 25 experience centers in the core cities of India. Uh, these centers provide uh, you know, free derma and dental consultation to customers that come in and provide enhanced treatment journey support to our existing users. Uh, we intend to double this number to almost 45 experience centers across the next leg of cities in the next two years using this capital. So how many uh, customers do you currently have and uh, what are the product offerings? Sure. So as a brand, right, uh, across the dental and derma tech solutions category, we have already serviced more than 1,50,000 customers uh, in our lifetime. Uh, as of now as well, we uh, clock in an annual uh, revenue quantum of almost 250 crores. Uh, which means doing almost 16,000 at-home uh, services or sessions for our consumers across largely the top 10 cities uh, of India. Uh, our plan 
you know, with this capital is to basically grow profitably over the next couple of years. We intend to cross the 500 crore uh, revenue mark in the next two years on the growth side. Uh, but uh, there is also very, very strong sense of profitability in the business. Um, our idea is to get to an EBITDA profitable number or break even by March 2025. And tell us overall how many dental professionals you have. Um, is it consisting of orthodontists, in-house dentists on the platform for Tootsie? Sure. So uh, we have a pretty expansive ecosystem right now. It comprises almost um, 100 plus in-house dental and derma professionals. That includes orthodontists, dentists, dermatologists. It comprises a network of more than 500 partner dentists that uh, we have associations with across the country. Uh, we have a US FDA certified laboratory, which is the highest hallmark of credibility in the aligner uh, technology industry uh, for uh, our lab uh, that allows us to almost ship out more than uh, one lakh aligners every single month uh, to our consumers. Besides that, we have a network of almost 25 flagship experience centers in the core cities of India. And this is essentially the ecosystem that we currently operate with to provide services to our consumers. Our plan with this capital is to essentially increase uh, you know, this ecosystem or strengthen this further ecosystem across the next 30 cities of India. Uh, I think what we intend to do is really double down on our value proposition to consumers, right? That is providing the best of both at-home convenience that a consumer wants, plus expert access through our experience centers at all times. Now, there are a lot of well-established players within the skincare as well as in the dental care space. So how do you really plan to take on competition, penetrate what is already a fairly crowded space? So look, as a platform, we have a fairly wide range of uh, solutions or services across uh, dental, cosmetic dermatology and the hair removal categories. And therefore, in an indirect sense, you could say that, you know, uh, you know, we have a wide range of competition, right? So the competition would range from, say, the mom and pop dentist or orthodontist. It could range to other clear aligner brands. It could be your cosmetic dermatology chains, or it could be your razor brands, hair removal brands for all you know, right? Having said that, uh, we have a very unique approach to building the business and the platform. Uh, I don't think there is any direct competition platform that really provides the 360 degree host of dental, derma, and hair removal solutions uh, in the manner that we do, which is home services coupled with uh, services at our centers at all times. Uh, so we actually have a phenomenal level of confidence in this industry, which is uh, the clinical makeover or the clinical beauty industry. And we know that we are approaching the problem set uh, in a 360 degree manner, right? Providing uh, digital, online, as well as offline solutions to our customers to provide the highest standards of quality of treatment, but in an affordable and accessible manner. Now, you spoke of achieving that 500 crore rupee revenue over the next two years to become a bit positive in the next 18 months or so. How do you plan to really achieve that? The idea there, like I said, is in the top 10 cities of India, we will strengthen our experience centers. We will move from 20 experience centers that we have right now to almost 40 in the next two years. That will allow us to uh, obviously increase the customer experience that our existing users have, but also acquire newer customers who uh, would want to trust uh, a brand that has physical expert access at all times. Uh, we also plan to expand our geographic footprint across the next 30 cities of India, uh, building in on home scan services there. Uh, we uh, currently have laser hair removal as well as clear aligner technology as our hero offerings. But in the recent months, we have also been scaling up some of our newer offerings, which include acne treatments and solutions, uh, anti-aging treatments, uh, teeth whitening treatments, and so on. So we will be expanding some of our offerings across India. Uh, in the last year, we also launched operations in the Middle East, uh, in uh, UAE as well as Saudi Arabia. And we're currently exporting our aligner products there. Our US FDA certification allows us to leverage, uh, you know, uh, this and provide uh, or export aligner products to countries outside of India. 
So we will continue scaling down, scaling up our international uh, operations as well. Uh, in the Middle East, we will actually become profitable in the next uh, probably six months. Uh, and we anticipate that in the next one, one and a half year, it will contribute to almost 15% of our overall company revenues. So that's our um, roadmap uh, to getting to our revenue, our target revenue growth in the next couple of years, but also doubling down on profitability and getting to an EBITDA break even in the next 15 to 18 months. So there were some reports as well that indicated that there was a layoff of about 20 to 30 employees in the month of May uh, to extend the runway because there was a delay in the fund, uh, fund round. Can you just clarify, will there be more layoffs? In terms of layoffs, etc., I think we all are aware that, um, you know, our company, uh, just like most other startups, continues to focus on or have a very high focus on profitability and efficiency, right? So as part of our efficiency exercise, we do uh, take steps or make efforts to ensure that we are able to uh, grow and churn out revenues with as lean a team as possible. So we've done whatever was, uh, you know, part and parcel of basically getting profitable growth over the last one year uh, and will continue to do that over the next couple of years. Uh, so I think, you know, your layoffs, et cetera, would have just been uh, a part of our focus towards getting to profitability. Um, yeah. And, you know, you've got brand ambassadors, the likes of Anushka Sharma and Virat Kohli. What are your overall ad spends? Are you worried that you're spending maybe too much when it comes to ad spends? Sure. So look, we're in a category where uh, investment in the category as well as the brand uh, is obviously critical and important. And we have uh, partnered with uh, eminent brand ambassadors like Virat Kohli as well as Anushka Sharma to basically help us do that. And that has actually helped us get a very, very large market share in the categories that we operate in today. Uh, so yes, we do invest in uh, you know category creation, etc. Uh, having said that, uh, these are very efficient and our marketing spends continue to get more and more efficient with them. Over the last two years, we've actually doubled our efficiency on the marketing uh, or the customer acquisition side as well. And that happens because we not only invest in brand, but we have a great product at the back end and we have a vertically integrated platform that really allows us to sell the product to the consumer uh, in an affordable manner while still maintaining stellar margins. So from an economics perspective, uh, we have already managed to get to a contribution margin positive level across each and every one of our categories. Uh, so we continue to do that. We continue to focus and double down on efficiency. And our plan is to basically uh, get profitable growth, continue to get the profitable growth through the avenues that we already discussed. Uh, and we'll soon be a bit more profitable in the next 16 to 18 months on the basis of this. Thanks for that, Sumita. Let's move right on. And it clearly has been quite a challenging year for the Indian startup ecosystem. Funding has plummeted to a seven-year low. A 65% decline is what we've seen in the year 2023, according to uh, reports by Traxon. Let's take it across then to my colleague Sharad to understand better. And Sharad, clearly funding has dropped from $25 billion in the previous year to $8 billion, a meager sum in the last year. Well, 2023 has been a forgettable year when it comes to tech startup funding. And if you look at the funding numbers, that has come in at roughly seven-year low levels. Now, even if on a year-on-year -year basis, if you look at it, more than 67% drop has been there when it comes to the overall funding. Now, of course, the funding winter impact is there. That has actually plagued the Indian startup system over the last two years. And there hasn't been very large late-stage funding announcements and only two unicorns were made in the year 2023 itself. Now, let's look at the tech startup funding over here. And we look at it in 2016, they raised roughly $5.3 billion. And that kept on increasing and hit its peak in 2021 with almost flows coming in of almost $41 billion. After that, the fall started in the year 2022. It was roughly $25 billion. And 2023, the numbers coming in single digits of roughly $8.3 billion. So that's what we can say is coming in at the funding at a seven-year low levels. Apart from this, there are certain segments where we have seen strong inflows coming in. And of course, there has been a change in leadership of these segments earlier. It was SaaS companies. And now we are looking at electrical vehicle funding. That's the only sector which actually raised more than a billion dollars. 
to be precise 1100 million dollars apart from this alternative lending fashion tech logistics tech and b2b e-commerce these are the emerging sectors where strong funding was there across the board be it the seed stage or in the later stages as well at the range of funding if you look at it that range between 663 to almost 850 million dollars each for these segments so we did speak about the total tech funding trends we spoke about importantly which segments are buzzing and also there are certain companies and of course they are actually getting ready for their ip also for the next 18 to 24 odd months and that is where the focus is in the markets but they were successful enough to actually raise in the late stage funding space as well so looking at the bigger names we are having phone pay lens cart roughly 500 to 623 million dollars they raised respectively and farm easy udan and parfius also did make it to the list so of course if you are looking at late stage funding of these important startups so they will be looking at the path to profitability and of course cost rationalization layoffs were the order of for the year 2022 and 2023 but it's expected that the overall interest rate scenario is going to improve next year and we might see some good companies coming in the ipo space as well as important late stage funding might start again for the ipos that's what the analysts are stating Moving on then you've got 197 Communications which is the parent company of Paytm they've announced that they will invest close to 100 crore rupees in the international finance tech city that's gift city in Gujarat in order to build a global finance ecosystem let's uh, take it across to my colleague Sumita Kareer who joins in with those updates Sumita this news coming in just uh, ahead of the vibrant Gujarat summit India's top uh, payments and financial services company Paytm is uh, investing 100 crores in Gift City in Gujarat it has plans to offer AI driven uh, solutions across cross border remittance programs in fact Paytm will also set up a redevelopment center for innovation and this 100 crores of investment will be made in Gujarat in Gift City over a period of time now this ai driven cross border remittance system will ensure that there is reduced friction in cross border remittances it will also lead to faster and uh, cost effective solutions now paytm is essentially also looking at job creation and uh, uh, will house engineers to develop a suite of world class financial products and services so what essentially paytm is looking at is using this opportunity to build new tech for users across the globe that are looking to invest in india Founder and CEO Vijay Shekhar Sharma has uh, stated and I quote him Gift City is uh, set to become a global financial hub further putting India on the world map for innovation the strategic investment in Gift City represents a pivotal step towards building an artificial intelligence driven cross border remittance and payments technology landscape that will present global opportunities this will enable us to deliver fast reliable and cost effective remittance solutions reducing friction This announcement remember uh, came in just ahead of the Vibrant Gujarat Global Summit that's underway in uh, Gujarat currently major announcements have come in from there Suzuki Motor has announced to invest 3400 crores and the Tata Group has also made an announcement in building a semiconductor facility Adani as well has uh, made an announcement of investing 2 lakh crores so uh, really this happening around uh, the Gujarat story and how Gujarat is really developing and coming up as an investment destination that is a crucial point to note here well let's hear it out then from nikhil kamath of zero da as he talks at the vibrant gujarat summit listen in to what he had to say the last 10 years have been incredible and i'm not the only exception here in india uh, there are many other exceptions like me we call this the startup ecosystem of india the big change in india from the last decade in my opinion also has been that entrepreneurship has moved from something that we have all watched around us heard in uh, movies or thought could as- thought could happen something that we aspire to to entrepreneurship today which is something that is the that something that we all are actively trying today when i talk to indians in the west who have done very well Uh, the only thing i hear from them it's a very young word i call it fomo the fear of missing out they're talking about india as a story that they fear missing out today that change which has happened in the last 10 10 years uh, is so evident to see that it makes me feel proud it makes me feel like i'm in the right place at the right time 
and that place today is India. Let's hear it out then from Sunil Subramaniam as he shares his outlook on IPOs. I think that uh, yes, the IPO market will continue its fervor because this whole scenario again is the election scenario, which is given a lot of confidence to the market participants. I think penetration of equities as an asset class, new IPOs, I think that's going to be a rage for some time and you would see a froth in that IPO market. You can't help it. That's the, that's the way forward for the next few months. Plus the fact is that even within the mutual fund, if you see the SIP book, I see that almost 30% of the SIP book is in small and mid-cap space. Plus you have another 30% in multi-cap. So roughly half of the SIP book of 17,000 crores is available for buying in the smaller end of the cap curve. And so even mutual fund institutional participation in the IPOs, they would be having the money to deploy in good quality IPOs. So I see the IPO market you know, doing very, very well in terms of uh, listing gains and those kind of a stuff. But over a period of a six months to nine months, these IPOs would have to demonstrate the value proposition and there would be fluctuations in their price. So I would say that from a longer term perspective, yes, it makes sense. But in the shorter term, I think there would be a lot of post-listing uh, fluctuations. So retail investors should be careful about what they do with their uh, IPO if they get an allotment. So I think otherwise, I see the strong domestic flow uh, coming into support. And that would tend to be at the smaller end of the cap curve. So I do expect uh, the IPO market to get a lot of buying support in the coming months. We also spoke with Sayan Mukherjee of Nomura and he shared his views on startups amid the funding winter, ripple effects as well as what the outlook is for startups in the year ahead. See, I think, uh, you know, of course, you know, things can get tighter and we have seen a phase where, you know, things are tougher. You have you have seen, you know, a lot more uh, funding difficulties in, in uh, you know, many of the startups. It's probably not as easy as it was just after COVID. Uh, I think that trend can potentially continue. But I guess there is a lot of interest in India as an economy, right? And I think if there are uh, if there are businesses which have proven themselves, uh, I think would uh, be able to attract funding. So funding would be more selective, I would say. But nonetheless, I think the interest that you know we have in India today uh, is is quite high. I mean, India is doing much better than many of the other economies. So to that extent, I would expect uh, good businesses uh, where the where the business model is established uh, would continue to sort of get uh, adequate funding.